God, I'd love to find out what deal McGregor did with the UFC to come back. Because you like you know this stuff. You're the biggest kid of all time, and you know this one's gonna be huge. Yeah. There's no way he's playing the same. He, there's no way he's in the same lane as he was when he fought Eddie Alvarez. <laughs> no. The amount of money he's making on this one, I'd dying to know. And we, we it's been tough to find out because the they give us what the commit. Also, this is one of the reasons in Vegas we'll get we'll find out what the commission tells us. Mm-hmm. But th- it'd be so interesting to see. Did they give him stock in the company? What they do? Is it a flat fee? Because he's not fighting like, you know, a million win, m- million to show. That ain't happening. After 100 mil. No, he's getting a flat fee now. Yeah. And I wonder what it is. Is it 20 million? Is it 30 million? Whatever the highest paid e- is, and it's McGregor, you got to imagine triple that, double that, at least. Coming off the Mayweather hype, coming off the, as big as the star he is now, the state of where the UFC's at now, like you're looking at some major fucking buku dollars. And he deserves it. Look what he's doing. <sighs> he had for the UFC two hundred five, three million, three point five million to show, and fifty thousand. So, yeah. so he got he got four. Well, uh, so three point five. So he made basically four million, including the Reebok sponsorship, right? Mm-hmm. Well, three point six million. Oh, I see. They include that. So he made, yeah, basically three point six million. God, forty thousand dollars for Reebok sponsorship. Greatest deal ever for Reebok ever. Think about it. And this isn't a knock on anyone, but you for the price of Conor McGregor, you pay the same price for Eddie Alvarez and Woodley. Hmm. It's crazy, right? Yeah. What do you think about Khabib and, and what I said earlier about making sure that he puts himself in position where the weight is not going to be a question? Because I don't know if he weighed 54 for the last one, but it really didn't seem to be in question. And again, just standing next to him, I feel like he's made some decisions to make sure that this is something he has nipped in the bud. I'm not saying it's going to cost him necessarily in the first minute of the right. fight against Conor McGregor, but when I mentioned it to his guy, Daniel Cormier, you know, he didn't dismiss it as a factor. I just want to get your thoughts on on that particular observation I had a couple weeks ago there in, in Calgary. Well, it, it is certainly something different, right? So um, I, I think the last fight, he kind of came in a little bit lighter, too. He, he Yes. Uh, and I think it was a good decision. So, you know, if he gets too excited, I, I remember uh, in my fight against BJ Penn, um, I was training like an animal. I started way too early, and I peaked too early. I, I felt like crap, and... Um, yeah, it, it was not a good situation. Um, so I, I think for Habib, you know, I don't think he's going to get rattled by Conor McGregor necessarily, but he is very motivated to smash Conor McGregor, and sometimes you can get a little yes. too excited. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. I, I think he's coming in leaner because he knows how important this fight is. He realizes that, yes, he has missed weight before. He does not want to be that guy again. Uh, so he's coming in lighter. Um, and I think it suited him well in that last fight. I don't think it's going to be a case where he's cutting weight, he's coming in a little bit lighter, he cuts weight maybe a little bit earlier, uh, and now he's weakened by that. I I don't think that's going to be the case with Habib Nurmagomedov. You look at the the top of the division right now, Khabib versus Conor in October. When you look at that fight, and you, 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 know, you close your eyes, you envision potential outcomes for that fight. What's the first outcome that comes to mind? How do you see that fight playing out in your mind? I've tried to envision it, and I can't, I can't come out with the outcome. Um, you know, it's such an intriguing matchup that uh, who, who's going to impose their will? Um, is Khabib going to be able to get inside and take Conor down without getting cracked? You know, I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I spoke to James Victor opponent recently, and he said that he had a bunch of, I guess, prepared 
insults, so to speak, going into that press conference the other day. Do you feel like uh, like he, you know, made you look kind of foolish with those with those kind of canned responses? Do you feel like you could have had uh, some better preparation going into the press conference? No. Or do you not care about that kind of thing? No, no, I don't care about that. Uh, I don't. I guess maybe you can inform me of what was so intriguing about what he said. It's not my opinion. He's he th- he thinks that uh, no, I he made you look bad. No, I'm the Homer Simpson of MMA. Yeah, he is thinks a, he made you look is that, bad. Is that a stat? Is that a statistic? I guess that's I'm, not a real statistic. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's just him being foolish. Um, you know, he's he's also said that you know his volume is more than me. I mean, unless he's counting every backward step he takes as a punch thrown or a kick thrown, then maybe. But I mean, the guy doesn't get it. The guy doesn't understand why I'm uh, headlining my third out of fourth main event. He doesn't understand why I'm getting the opposition I'm getting, and I'm not. I'm not the one uh, that needs to teach him. He's supposed to have people around him that that tell him, like, dude, obviously what you're saying and doing isn't working. Uh, you want top opposition? You go out there, you and you earn it. Uh, so yeah, he has a good opportunity here. Let's see if he goes out there and capitalizes on it. I uh, can't wait to put him to sleep and fucking stand over him and tell him he's a you know, just a huge turd, man. I can't wait to can't wait to put him to sleep. I can't wait to uh, to send him home, uh, not being able to look in the mirror for a week. Can't wait to send him home, not being able to take a comfortable shit for a week. Uh, these are the things I'm looking forward to. So go on, what's happening with Luke Rock? So he apparently is supposed to fight uh, Chris <laughs> Weidman. Going. And he did Oh, he's fighting wanna... Weidman again. Is yeah, he, he is, but apparently he was saying that he needs more money. He needs a right contract for the UFC 230 belt versus Weidman, and he said, I'd be losing money by fighting because of all of the other business ventures that he has, he'd have to take off time from in order to I did prepare. see something about that, actually. It's interesting. I mean, what are these business ventures? I mean, of course, he's got his modeling career. He's created plus. the best soap to get. He's got his modeling career, but has he? Yeah, let's say. I don't uh, know. Is yeah, he just doing know. that one thing and that's it? I don't Seems know. like it. Maybe. Maybe. No, but may, no, no, I'm actually asking You're a genuine genuinely question. Asking. Yeah, yeah, I don't because, know. Because sometimes you might get picked up for, I mean, it seems like he is the face of one aftershave or something like that, which is phenomenal. It's yeah. fantastic. It really is. I can't hate on that. I mean, more power to him. That's that's absolutely fantastic. But like Alan Joban, and again, I'm not shitting on Alan Joban, and I may be incorrect here, but he's kind of, he was doing some the, modeling. The reputation is that he's a Versace model, but I think he might have just done one... One uh, uh, print ad. Yeah, or one project. Or, uh-huh. you yeah, know, yeah, a, which they'll pick up people. Campaign. Campaign, campaign that's what yeah, he, yeah, he did. Yeah. One campaign, I think, or I could be wrong, and if, if I am Alan, I apologize. Alan's a great guy, friend of the podcast. But if I did one campaign for you Versace, never I'd, never, you know, I'd, I'd wear it on my T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. I, guys, could you imagine if Lewis did one fucking campaign <laughs> for Dolce & Gabbana? It would be the oh, campaign okay, in Zoolander no. for Daryl Lee. Yeah. This is the quote. This is what he said. He said, no pen to paper. Uh, I don't need to do anything. Business is good. We're doing business everywhere. I've got a lot of things going on. When you show me the right so contract, much. I'll sign the right contract. I'm nowhere near done fighting, but it's gonna. it's got to make sense. That's good for him. Uh, well, good for him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, good for him. You know what? That's. I, I wish more fighters were like that. I mean, exactly. I, you know, I mean, I, I'll, I'll say... You know, I'm not trying to stand up for fighters' rights and take a shit on the UFC, but but more, you have to know your worth. Yeah, Simple exactly. You have to be you able to, to know your out. worth, and you got to be able to say no. Yeah, I and want that's not more. shitting on the UFC. That's fine. That's good yeah. business. Dana White and the UFC would appreciate and that. They obviously recognize that. Yeah, because, because he, they gave him more money. He, they gave him more money. It's just so hard to say no. Both comedians and fighters, you get nothing for so long, and when yeah. you start getting things, the idea of saying no is mind-boggling. You're training yourself to accept less than your worth. Well, his point so was So much. That, yeah. My whole my whole career, I've been going like, yeah, dude, I'll. In the beginning of comedy, you just want to get up. Let me suck it up right now. Let me get on stage. No, 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 I'll pay you. (laughs) Just get my wife in for free. All right, that's all I need. I'll suck your dick. (laughs) But it's true. You'll do it for free. And it's the same thing with fighting. You want to get up there so bad and prove yourself. And, like, you know, you can kind of justify it because it's part of this bigger picture. Um, But in the very beginning, dude, you're, you know, you're so used to just taking so much shit that by the time you have that opportunity, you know, Unless you're, you well, know, well, his actual quote was, if I'm not mistaken, if uh, if he was to take the fight, of course he'd have to dedicate himself to a training camp. So mm-hmm. therefore, he'd actually end up earning less money because he couldn't do the endeavors that he's involved with outside of the octagon. He wouldn't be able to pursue them and do them whilst he's training for a fight. And if you're going to make less money from the fight than your regular shit that you do during the day, 
then that is just lunacy. It's ludicrous. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, so so fair play. Fair play. Even though we just read out his backstory, his childhood, we shit all over it. I'm and jealous his parents, of it. I'm his upbringing. Shitting. Exactly. That's not shitting on it. He, he, that's the balance. He Good got to have him. that amazing well back. 